This Week in IT. Microsoft fixes more than 80 bugs, 8 critical and 2 zero days, while at the same time rolling out new AI features. Plus, IT admins will be able to block Office apps from saving files locally, and VBScript is headed for the dumpster truck. So stay tuned for all the latest. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I talk about everything connected to Azure, Microsoft 365 and Windows. Today's episode is sponsored by our friends at Chaosoft. This week, of course, was Patch Tuesday and Microsoft released its cumulative updates for Windows 10 and Windows 11 and updates for a whole load of other products and services, of course. They included eight critical flaws, but I just want to talk today about the two zero days and, of course, as always, you need to test these patches with you know, a smaller group of users and then gradually expand the patch out to your organization once you've ensured that there are no compatibility issues. So let's look at these two zero days. So the first one is an escalation of privilege flaw in server message block, which is the protocol that's used in Windows for file sharing. Now, essentially, this flaw would allow an attacker to gain the same privilege privileges as the logged on user. So obviously, if that's a standard user, then at least the operating system is kind of protected. If it's a local administrator, then that's a bigger problem. But nevertheless, this is something that you need to get patched. Now, if you're developers or any applications that you're using in your organization, use the popular json.net framework or library, whatever you want to call it, that's available for the .NET framework. There's also a zero day uh, flaw in that which has been patched. So this is something that's sometimes also referred to as Newton JSON or just JSON.net. And it's quite a popular library as far as I understand. So if you're using that, you need to make sure that either you're using an up-to-date version of it because it tends to affect versions of this library that are lower than version 13 point something something. So if you are doing anything that's lower than that, you need to either upgrade it or make sure you get this patch in place as quickly as possible. This flaw isn't an escalation of privilege uh, issue like the uh, zero day I mentioned before, but this is a, a problem where an attacker could essentially exhaust the CPU or memory on a device causing a denial of service. Now, there are a whole load of features that were in testing in the release preview ring earlier this month. And I think some people expected them to be part of this cumulative update. I don't see any of these those things on my devices that have been updated. So things like uh, Windows backup for organizations, changes to the Windows Hello login screens, and a whole load of other tweaks that Microsoft was preparing for its Windows resiliency initiative. So I'm guessing either they are included in this cumulative update and they will be gradually switched on as the month goes on, you know, to kind of uh, gradually test these things, or maybe we won't see them until October's cumulative update. I'm not quite sure. I don't think Microsoft has said exactly, but there are some features that have that I'm pretty sure have come to AI PCs with this cumulative update. I don't have one, so I can't really confirm it. But as far as I'm aware, there are some changes to the recall app. So it's got a new, newly redesigned home page, and the navigation screen has also been changed to make it look more like the, the Microsoft Store layout. So some improvements to that. Also, click to do gets a new tutorial. So it's actually showing you how to use this click to do feature if you have an AI PC. Before I go on to the next story, I've got a quick favor to ask you. It would be great if you signed up for the This Week in IT newsletter. If you sign up using the link below, you'll also get a copy of our free patch like a pro that tells you how to organize and manage patching all of your endpoints in your organization. So please check that out. The Microsoft 365 Enterprise Apps, or as most of us just call them, the Office Desktop Apps, I now get in a feature where IT administrators can stop users from saving files to their local devices using any of those apps for version 2506 or later. The idea of this feature is to improve compliance for organizations that need to make sure that 
all important documentation, files, whatever it might be, is stored in the cloud for whatever compliance or regu regulatory reason. And as it stands now, users can save files locally, in the cloud, wherever they want, essentially. So this policy will allow admins to make sure that files are only saved to the cloud. Now, you're able to configure this using either something like Microsoft Intune, so it's an MDM policy, or Office Cloud policy. So if you think this is something that's going to be useful for your organization, you can check that out right now. This week, Microsoft reminded us that it's going to be retiring VBScript by the end of 2026 or 2027. It doesn't quite say which. This is an new information. They said this originally in 2023, but I guess their telemetry is showing that organizations are still using this. So what does this mean? Well, if you have macros programmed in Office using Visual Basic for Applications or VBA, if you are calling any VB script files, any file that ends with the .vbs extension, or if you're using VB script type libraries like VB script.regexp, then you need to update those macros. The good news is that the Office apps starting from 25, so version 2508, include those regexp libraries in VBA. So you'll be able to find a solution for that VB script regex call to that library directly from within a VBA. So what does Microsoft advise in organizations to do? The first thing is to make sure that you're upgraded to the latest versions of the Office applications, which you, know, you should probably be doing anyway, but make sure you do that. RegExp is included in VBA in these later versions of Office, so there's no need to manually add the VB script DLL to those macros, but you are obviously going to have to review all of your code. And they're saying, make sure you test this in an environment where a VB script is not available. So test your macros, make sure any modifications are made that they work in a test environment without VB script installed. Microsoft is saying we understand that this could involve you know, reviewing thousands and thousands of lines of code, but you know, they're giving you plenty of time to prepare for this. So if you weren't aware, it's now time to start looking at those macros. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up because it helps to get the video seen by more people on YouTube. I'm going to leave you with another video right now about the growth of the AI PC market this year and going forwards. But that's it from me this week. I'd like to thank again our sponsors, Chaosoft. You can find information about their products in the description below. But that's it from me for this week and I'll see you next time.